Welcome to Behold, a podcast for women longing to live a life worthy of the call they have received. I'm Christy Horsch, and this is episode 131. Hello, welcome back to another episode of Behold. I am so grateful to be here with you today. Let's get started with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Come and fill our lives. Make it obvious to the world that we belong to you. Let your light shine through us. Help us to live a life of virtue. Help us to see. Help us to see you and your works in our lives and in the lives around us. Help us to recognize where you're calling us and give us the courage to go boldly forward. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Easter. I am so excited to be in the Easter season. I love that our church has seasons of fasting and feasting. And the Easter octave may have ended this past Sunday, but the Easter season is just gearing up. So make sure that you have that Alleluia close on your lips all season long. I think we're so blessed that Easter's in the spring. It's a time of rebirth and new life, and we can so easily see his handiwork as the dry, barren world bursts into color. Instead of being stuck inside in the dark, we are out in the world in the light. It's such an incredible metaphor in our life with Jesus. In a few weeks, I'm going to host a special spring seminar where we're going to dive into all things spring, time management, new goals, moving forward. I'm really excited to share this with you, so keep an eye out for that. But today, as we settle into this Easter season, I wanted to talk about resurrection. As St. John Paul II said, we are a resurrection people and Alleluia is our song. What does that mean to be a resurrection people? It means that even in the midst of trial or challenge or persecution, suffering, even death, we are a people that will allow the Lord to resurrect us and to make us new. Praise be to God. Sometimes I think we get a little stuck in the suffering part. Some of us want to stay there. We're carrying our cross and following the Lord, and he gets to the part of the crucifixion, and we say, I'm good. I'm good carrying this cross. I see what's coming here. Just, you know, put down the hammer and nails. This suffering I'm experiencing carrying this cross, that's enough for me. I don't want to be crucified. We would rather suffer in a continuous carrying of the cross than allow ourselves to be crucified. But the thing is, resurrection is not possible without the crucifixion. We have areas in our lives that are shrouded in sin and disorder. Oftentimes, just the desire for pleasure, whether that be food or entertainment or bodily pleasure or so on, is so powerful that we lose the ability to think clearly when pleasure presents itself. For example, if we say that we aren't going to eat sugar anymore because we're struggling with ordering food in our lives and we're doing really well at it, but then we go to a friend's house and they offer us a cookie, we know that we shouldn't take it. We were committed to not eating sugar. We've talked to the Lord about it. We know he's calling us to this, but in the face of this pleasure, our brain can justify anything. Our brain tells us that it's okay to eat the sugary treat because it's only one, or maybe because it's a special occasion. Our brain may even convince us that it's an act of charity to accept the cookie from our friend and go against our godly desire to rightly order food in our lives. We know God has called us to rightly order our food, and yet in the face of that pleasure, we are quick to abandon our commitment. We continue to carry the cross of being overweight and struggling with food rather than allowing ourselves to experience the discomfort of saying no to our friend and to the cookie. But when we do allow ourselves to experience that discomfort, when we do allow ourselves to be crucified, we can then be resurrected. We can find freedom and new life and become a new creation. An area of struggle becomes a story of God's love, mercy, and glory. But we need to remember that every cross we carry, we carry with the Lord in his time. We're only able to carry our cross well with his strength and guidance, with him helping us to shoulder the burden. We can only be resurrected through his healing and mercy. There are some crosses that we will not find relief from in this lifetime. 
We walk by faith in God's perfect timing. Sometimes we're called to that place of waiting with our crosses, and we won't see relief on this side of eternal life. Other times we are called to be crucified, and this is a painful process. But on the other side is that resurrection. We are a resurrection people. Alleluia is our song. We have seen Jesus raised from the dead, and we are invited to do the same. There are so many areas of our life that we're, we're dead there from sin. We're stuck in places of pain, shame, regret, addiction, a divided or wandering heart. The Lord is inviting us to be healed. He wants to raise us up. He wants to call us out of the tomb. The Lord will lavish us with his strength, love, and mercy. You need only to ask. So ask him to raise you up. Ask him to resurrect that area of your life that is dead to sin. And then allow him to heal you. Allow him to do the work. Allow him to remove the stone from your tomb and then choose to get up and walk out of the tomb into the new life with the Lord by your side. We need to embrace what St. John Paul II said, that we are a resurrection people. We need to make this a part of our identity. We need to sing it from the rooftops and live each day in a way that reflects that this is at the core of our identity. We believe that there is more than this world. We believe in more than flesh and blood. We believe that that on the other side of our pain and discomfort is new life. And when we embrace this as a part of our identity as a daughter of God, we become one step closer to living our lives worthy of the call we have received. Thank you so much for joining me today. We have two exciting new things coming up soon. One, the spring seminar I already mentioned, more information will be coming soon to the email newsletter. So if you haven't signed up yet, check out the show notes on how to get onto that weekly email update. And two, I'm gearing up for another round of Beloved this summer. Beloved is my weight loss program that helps you to rightly order your food in your life so you can find freedom from emotional eating and from food addiction. If you are interested in joining Beloved to be a part of this next round that will be starting this summer, you can go to beholdyourlife.com slash beloved for more information. Otherwise, I will have more information available soon, again, in the newsletter and on our Facebook page and the website. So I hope that you will check both of those things out. I hope that you are having a very blessed Easter, and I will see you again soon. In the meantime, I'll be praying for you. God bless.